Good evening. Um, welcome to our meeting. I'll call to order the September 26, 2018 meeting of the Falmouth Conservation Commission. Uh, before we get underway, I'd like to just ask everyone to please silence whatever devices you've got with you. And also, I will say that um, anyone who is here, um, even just as Thank part you. of the audience, you're, everyone's welcome to address the board, but you will all need to come to the podium and identify yourselves when you do that. Thank you. All right, so um, the first item on the agenda is other business. A proposed ADA accessible trail at Highfield Hall. Where's that stand, John? Um, I don't see the representative so from Highfield Hall yet, Madam Chairman. So can we just table that? Uh, yes. Can so we? moved. Second. All right. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed. Aye. Unanimous. So moved. Aye. All right. Next, we moved on to requests for determination of applicability, and uh, for this type of permit application what the applicant wants to hear is a negative determination that means that the applicant does not need to um, to go further and prepare a more detailed thorough application what he has submitted he or she is um, sufficient so Brendan oh, <coughs> Leon Chase and Ann Worthington Ford <coughs> Ford Bond, Ford <coughs> Pond, East Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to excavate and construct a 60 by 60 foot crawl space foundation. Uh, Madam Chair, the staff recommends a negative to determination under the state and bylaw resource area boundaries are not confirmed by this RDA. So moved. Second. Second. All right. Any questions or comments from the board? Any questions or comments from the public? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Betty Wright and Alice Bowler, 41 Toby Lane, East Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to pump and fill existing cesspool and install a new Title V sewage disposal system with 1,500 gallon septic tank. Madam Chair, the staff recommends a negative two determination under the state and bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed by this RDA. So move. Second. Uh, any, any questions or comments from the board? Anything from the public? All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Richard Garvey, 450 Grand Avenue, Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to raise and rebuild the existing single family home and upgrade the subsurface sewage disposal system. <clears throat> Madam Chair, the staff recommends a negative two determination under the state and bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed by the SARDA. So moved. Second. Second. Any questions or comments from the board? From the public? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, 100 Ransom Road, Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to upgrade the existing cesspool with a hoot denitrifying sewage disposal system and install a retaining wall. Um, I'm recusing on this one. And I'm recusing also. Madam Chair, the staff recommends a negative two determination under the state and bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed by this RDA. So moved. Second. So, second. Any questions or comments from the board? Anything from the public? All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? <clears throat> Unanimous. So moved. So that would be six. Looks like. Great. Harry Belcher, 19 Vineyard Street, Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission to construct an in-ground pool, spa, and patio. Madam Chair, the staff recommends a negative two determination under the state and bylaw. Resource area boundaries are not confirmed by this RDA. So moved. Second. Second. Anything from the board? Anything from the public? Right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. <coughs> now we move on to... Um, oh, <clears throat> yes. Continued requests for a hearing under a notice of intent. All hearings of the Falmouth Conservation Commission are held simultaneously under the authorities of the Massachusetts Wetlands Protect Protection Act and the Falmouth Wetlands Bylaw. <coughs> Although a single decision of the commission is issued, it represents a separate decision under each authority. 
So first we have Donald and Nancy Holleran, 11 Foster Road, East Falmouth, Massachusetts. <coughs> Excuse me. For permission to remove wood bulkhead wall and replace with 100 linear feet of stone riprap wall, remove wood ramp and steps and construct stone steps and construct 40 linear feet of fiber rolls and all associated excavating and grading. Um, Madam Chairman, just for the record, the quorum is Peter, Steve, Jamie, Courtney, and Kevin. Thank you. Um, and we have, well, save it till later. Thank you. Okay. Good evening, Jeff. Good evening. Oh. Um, well, it was here a minute ago, and now it's not here. <laughs> so, um, okay, perfect. Whatever you want. Sheet one or sheet two. You're on the bottom. Uh, th the these are mine. Second nope, third. second and third. Large. Is your large photograph is okay. the second one, and your plan is right, the third one. Okay. Sorry about that. Jeff Ryther with BSS Design, representing Collarins tonight. This is a little different, so you have to give me a minute. Um, this has been continued a couple of times now because of uh, better, worse. How about more lights out? Okay, let me interrupt you. Sorry. Uh, be because it's, it has to do with the uh, the wall that we're proposing here, with a hand on it. Um, this is the 100 foot wall that was just described in the first uh, minute there. Um, comes over to this position here. Excuse me, I keep on uh, just having to check this thing. Uh, this is where a, st a stairway is gonna be rebuilt into the stone riprap. And then this last section uh, right through here is no longer has the uh, fiber rolls that were in there, but they were across here. Now it's just gonna be sand and uh, erosion control fabric. And uh, on top of that, it, uh, planted beach grass. And there's a, a speck on the beach grass over here on this section BB. There's also a, a request to uh, add some more uh, restoration. So we're now three shrubs deep up the top instead of two. And I hope that works for you. Um, I don't want to see them packed too close, but uh, maybe three to four feet in the center. Um, there was another question about um, the height of the wall, the existing wall. So. Uh, Leo and I went back down there, um, separate uh, visits, and uh, measured it, and it's four and a half feet. So you'll see that the elevation will be nine. The bottom elevation of the wall is four and a half, and that gives us a four and a half foot high wall. Um, by the way, there's um, over here, there's the, the latest revision. But unfortunately, I can't read that one. So it's re removed the uh, fiber rolls. We expanded the area of uh, native plantings. We revised section BB and uh, Stated the uh, the details to match uh, those changes. Um, I was sent a, a, an email from Brendan, the conservation agent, and uh, he had visited the site with 
uh, Greg Berman of uh, the Coastal Processes Specialist and uh, Eastwood Woods Hole Sea Grant. And um, <coughs> he's had some comments, and uh, these, this was written up by uh, Brendan. One of the things I do want to show you, though, is uh, on another one of these. I'm not sure how we get to Maybe the other. Escape. Escape, huh? You didn't tell me that one. Okay. okay. So then I want to go <coughs> to your picture? Yeah. Okay. So let's see. Things like that. Just like that. Just give this thing some remote control. And do you hold up? There you go. Do it. Come right. straight up. Thank you. Jack. All right. Mm -hmm. Anyway, um, Greg Berman had these uh, comments, and he said he liked the design, yay, on the west section of the riprap. Yay. Um, and that's, um, well, that's at the far end of the, the project, and I'm sure some of you have been out there. Um, and he, he talked about the blending into the, uh, the, the riprap by uh, Foster. And he wanted to make sure that uh, I was comfortable with the toe stones being three feet plus or minus. I think they're actually, they're four feet. Um, I think I need to go back to my other slime. Right, you escape, Jeff. Yeah, <laughs> okay, back I there. go over all the way to the right and minimize that or close it. Close all tabs? Close current tab. Close current tab. Oh, yeah. okay. And there's your plant. All right, in this area here with the, the hand, that's the west side, um, you'll see the walls in black. That's the existing wall that goes all the way over. So he, uh, he liked to see that, that this was a very shallow slope riprap. This one here is going to be a little bit steeper. He showed that at one-to-one -one up here in Section AA. Um, so about the the, 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 the riprap toe stones, again, you can't see this, but there's a three and a half foot out of the ground, or no, in the ground with another foot beneath it of primary stone. So the, the, you'll see right here that it's a four foot stone, and I'm, uh, I'm okay with that. You see up there? On your plans? Mm-hmm. Yep. Okay. So also the path coming down to the uh, riprap over here has a 78-foot section of riprap extending eastward. <coughs> right in here, I believe, yeah. I wasn't sure exactly uh, when I read this exactly where the quarry fibers ought to go back, but says it's possible to substitute the riprap with uh, fiber roll, but at last meeting I was asked to take away the fiber roll, so I'm kind of confused on what to do here. So we're talking about we had fiber rolls in this section. I think that he's talking about fiber rolls right in this area. Is that right, Brenda? Yeah. Right there. So that could be done uh, no problem with that. Quick edit. Um, you have to excuse me, but I, I did get this just yesterday, and so I didn't have the week to make a change, so I'm here with this plan today in these notes. So lastly, uh, last uh, inquiry was about uh, the surface of the riprap, whether or not we can make it smooth or rough. Uh, we can make that edit very easily. It looks kind of smooth, but it's not as smooth as what you see over next door. That thing is, I don't know how they built it so smooth, but it would be more of a, um, a, a jagged face. And that's about it on the, uh, on the changes and these uh, notes. So with that, I'll take 
Uh, more questions? Thank you, Jeff. Yeah. Jim. Yes, Madam Chair. <coughs> I'm going to let Brendan speak to his um, on site yesterday. I was unfortunately unable to attend. I did ask Greg Berman to come out and look. I knew some of the commissioners were struggling <coughs> with the uh, replacement of a vertical wall, including myself, with a more slope revetment. Um, this is what Mr. Berman does. He works for the county in Hilly Sea Grant and does offer support to local commissions. Um, unfortunately, he was on the West Coast last week, Jeff, and couldn't go out last week. So this was the first opportunity he had to go out there. So mm -hmm. we apologize for giving you the uh, the information late. The good news is, um, you know, he was fairly positive about the plan. And I'll turn it over to Brendan, Mary, if you don't mind, just to I don't kind of recap what they talked about in the field. And I believe uh, Commissioner O'Brien was there, too. Yep, <laughs> Kevin and I went out, but uh, Jeff, you pretty much nailed everything that I sent you over. Um, the one question that you did have about the eight or nine foot section of riprap that extends past the stone steps. Yeah. Um, we did ask you to take away the fiber rolls, that entire length. Um, but right. Greg made a suggestion of a more natural transition from the steps into that um, nourish dune or the existing Talking about right where the yep. hand is yep. yep to make that section just a section of fiber rolls instead of a section of riprap so they do come in 10 foot sections typically so is that what we're talking of 10 yep. foot yep mm. little stair there and it's like a eight or nine <coughs> foot section right there okay the 20 square okay that's good to know anything else Brendan? Yeah, that's fine no, you covered everything else. The uh, the depth of the, of the toe stone, Greg would just wanted to make sure that the engineer was comfortable with that depth. And if he is, then we can go yeah. deeper if you like. But it's not on the quorum. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. It, is, it is a pretty dynamic section of beach right there. We just wanted to make sure it wasn't going to get undercut anytime soon. Well, I do have to. It looks like I need to make an edit to the plan. Um, so I could, you know, we, we uh, visit that one. Sure. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's it, yeah. Thank you. Steve. <coughs> no, I thank you for consideration and taking the time to, to take a look at this. It was an area of concern, and I don't have any other questions. All right. Peter. Uh, I just want to clarify something. Uh, with the seven to eight foot section of rip wrap, is that definitely out? And where are the only fiber rolls going to end up? Well, I did just mention they come in 10 foot length, so it, it would be right here. I didn't even know. Uh, probably up to the stair and then this direction can't put them under the stairs because the stairs yeah, are put stone. Them across, Jeff. I'd kind of go up. Yes. This way? Yes. No. Right. <coughs> and yeah. So right, right, right in there. Firm north. Yep. And Would you say north? I'm yeah, sorry. Just kind of come off the step. The same way it's going. Yeah, the same way the riprap's going, Jeff, with my hand. Right up here. Yep. Yep. Okay. Look at Jim. I, like I thought that was okay for stone, but I'm not sure about <laughs> fiber rolls. But it seems like we can, seems like we'd be doing a big dig for. Well, anyway, I don't have a fiber roll detail anymore, so it's okay, was, well, was part of this. Plan, yeah. Pardon? You can put it back in the plan. Yeah. I just didn't want to see the big fiber array, array of almost uh, armoring that dune. Right, I understand. Yeah. Okay, no right. other questions. Thank you. Jamie? Yeah, are you guys comfortable with the plantings? Yeah. yeah. That's all I have. All right. Kevin? Uh, you, in changing any of the depths of this uh, wall, you haven't uh, inched any farther. I was very pleased with the fact that the limit of work was where it was at the bottom of the toe of the wall. You haven't encroached anymore on the beach in this new design. Uh, no, it's no. the same section with the 
Okay. There's a couple of edits in there about height. So you'll see that right through here, there's the existing wall. If you, you can kind of <coughs> ghost it in the background right there. Yeah. Are you with me? All right. The existing wall. Yeah, that's the way you, yeah. yeah, that's the way it was marked out in the field. Yeah. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm fine. Uh, other than uh, I should comment for the record, both Brendan and uh, Greg were very knowledgeable, very helpful, and it was sweet. They both <laughs> offered to help me down onto the beach, and <laughs> after we were through, they both offered to help me off the beach. So I much appreciate it. Nice to know we have such gentlemen in town. Yes. Thank you for that. Courtney. Um, I'm, I'm just disappointed that you weren't able to come up with more definitive photographs from an earlier age uh, that would have well, I, assuaged my concerns. No other questions. I do have something for you, Court. Oh. Yeah, you, you <coughs> submitted a blown up version of previously submitted photo, but. Well, I, I mean, it, it shows the wall quite. I'm looking at it. Okay. That doesn't, that doesn't. I don't know why this doesn't come up. So, I mean, but right, I'm right just here, one person. Court, I'm you can see just telling you what my concerns are. Well, back in 78, this was the walkway down to the beach and then there was another walkway that went parallel to the shoreline. You can see from in this arrow right there, there's the, the wall that we're talking about. Still no, I, can same. I see that, but it's not clear to me that that wall is, or fence or whatever it is, is retaining anything. No? At least, you know, that's what I'm looking at. So, oh, because but it's, it's that's about me. If everybody's happy, we'll move on. Well, this is the only thing we could come up with that has a date on it. Um, down the corner, I can go no, back. No, I mean, it says uh, I, I, Davis you know, Cape Cod, summer 1978. So. Jeff, in the in the previous <laughs> thing, my comment was that the pictures that you submitted, you know, the aerials were not, in my mind definitive, yes, there's a line there, there's something there, there's a barrier, but is it a, a freestanding fence or is it a retaining wall? And that's what I was trying to get at. Um, the picture, that picture, which is, you know, you also submitted for the record, you know, it's, it's at such distance that in looking at it, I can't tell whether that retains anything or that's freestanding. If it's not retaining anything, then I have an issue with the whole thing. If it is, fair enough. You know, proceed. That's that's my concern, and I don't feel like since the last meeting you've necessarily addressed that straight on. But I'm only one commissioner. I've made my point, and um, you know, it's whatever the board wants to do. <coughs> Anything else here? Um, does anyone have a motion? I'd make a motion to take it under advisement. Second. All right. Anything from the public on this hearing? Jeff, you can just make the edits to the plan that was discussed and the minutes. It'll be conditioned so you can submit it whenever you'd like. Yeah, I'll get right to it. Letter. Tomorrow I'll be on it. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, all those in favor of Closing the hearing, taking it under advisement, say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous, so moved. Uh, five. No, I mean, yeah, you yeah, have the list, it's fine. All right, thank you. <clears throat> thank you, Jeff. Next, James and Paul DeVellis, 22 Dusty Miller Road, Falmouth, Massachusetts, for permission <coughs> to raise and rebuild the existing house, install Tidal 5 septic system, dry wells, and all associated excavating, grading, and landscaping. Who needs help with their presentation? 
Wanna, you wanna With do the it for computer, me? that is. Can you take so I can deal with people learning how to do this? No, we did this last week. We did oh. it last week, and it's been done yeah. at the small time. My congrats is our guinea pig last week. Yeah, yeah it's been. <laughs> Pam, given the people who have come before us lessons on how to do this? Brendan gave Tom a lesson. Apparently, Tom didn't take notes. <laughs> <laughs> I got it. See? <coughs> but yes, Betsy, we were the first hearing last week to do this. <coughs> Brendan's assistant has been very helpful. <laughs> well, good. I'm so glad to hear this. Tom, I'm looking forward to your presentation. You okay, Tom? Whatever that means. <laughs> Whatever that means, we'll see. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the record. My name is Tom Bunker, representing uh, uh, Jim DeVellis at, for re reconstruction at uh, 22 Dusty Miller Road. Uh, we've prepared these plans uh, for the project. We uh, start off, since we have a, sort of a multimedia, and we can add the old 1975 photos. Uh, you can zoom in somewhere. This is this is the house. Uh, get a little more. There we go. This house right here, uh, 1975, and then a little more updated to uh, nine, uh, 2018, 22 Dusty Miller Road. So, and you see here is Wizards uh, um, Bay is off to the left. The west, Racing Beach Ave, some vacant lot there. And then uh, this photo doesn't show the topography, but there's, there's the house. It's up on the, up on the high ground, uh, fronting on Dustin Miller Road in that location. And the town GIS uh, shows the uh, velocity flood zone lapping at the bottom of this uh, slope here, the bank. The house, you can see the topography goes from uh, about elevation uh, six down to this wetland. Uh, there's a wetland there also. Elevation six down there up to uh, elevation 34 up at the house. Um, so this being in a flood zone, coastal bank, uh, being in a velocity flood zone, there's a coastal bank. Some of this does slope, but steeper than uh, steeper than four to one. So we have this plan, existing conditions. Um, so we have the wetland out here. There's the 50 foot A zone to the wetland and the 100 foot B zone to the wetland. This um, uh, black dash line is the velocity flood zone in this location. And then above it is zone flood zone X. This uh, purple line, however, is the coastal bank. And this is the area where it slopes steeper than four to one in this location. And being in a velocity zone, it has a 50-foot uh, A zone, which, which runs through here. The, this uh, deck is in the A zone of the coastal bank. The house is mostly in the B zone. Um, and then there's a, also a shed in the driveway going out to Dusty Miller Road. This area is um, outside uh, jurisdiction. The uh, proposed site plan we have here um, the deck in this location. We've made a little bit smaller, a little bit further from, it's two feet further from the top of the bank and a uh, swimming pool partly in the A zone, partly in the B zone. The house has gotten larger. Um, it is, I think it's one foot closer to the A zone, but it's uh, more than 10 feet. It's, uh, it's 65 feet from the coastal bank, which is uh, more than enough for the 50 foot setback and the uh, and, uh, a limit of work. But we do have the limit of work here around the uh, lawn area in this location there are no um, well there are no, no trees there at all in, no, no trees to be cut down within the A or B zones 
there is one large ornamental cherry that's right here in front of the house on the street side of the house. And that, that's right about in the walkway here and that's um, one tree and, and of course where this uh, uh, limit of work extends beyond the uh, lawn area. There'll be other trees cut down in this location but there are no trees within your jurisdiction uh, to be removed. We uh, will be a septic upgrade, a new septic system in this location under the driveway. Uh, we have, because uh, the driveway slopes away from Dusty Miller Road, we have a catch basin and a leach pit in this location and dry wells going uh, to it from, from the roof. Uh, also, uh, uh, pipes coming from the roof going into this uh, leaching pit in this location which can also be used as the um, if any drawdown for the pool is required uh, it can be uh, put into that the um, there is a reduction in coverage in the B zone uh, so there's no planting required for that. There is a 127 square foot increase in coverage in the zone A, which tripled is, uh, what is it, 381 square feet of planting in the A zone in this location. <coughs> um, that's more to sh talk about on the Deck. Let's see where is that? Um, I, I learned that the the owner of the house or the previous owner of the house uh, did say that the deck has been there um, as long as he's had it. Uh, it was built at the same time as the house is what we said. Um, so here, here's the deck. Um, I wanted to point out a few things just uh, for its age. It, it does look in fairly good condition, um, but this is something if you know, um, some of you know, probably Jamie knows about the uh, fur decking it is very resistant, very long lasting, and uh, you know, you don't see fur decking on, on exterior decks much. Certainly it's not used now at all. Um, and this is, uh, you can see how worn thin it is and full of lichen and worn to the point where the uh, original finish nails are sticking up. So I think this is, it's, it's clearly an old deck. Um, that's just more, more of that showing its, its age. You can show underneath the deck, uh, clearly it's been there for quite some time uh, where there's, you know, there, there are roots from some of the, the stumps around there, but um, th there's been nothing, nothing growing under there for quite some time. Obviously, it's not recently put in. Uh, I can show you in one. This is one of the footings. Uh, it's quite old, uh, just because uh, you see how the concrete splashed up and, and sat on the, the grade. Uh, just pointing this out, how we, you know, it's. I, I, I think that shows that it's been there a while, and coupled with the owner saying that it's, it's been there as long as they've. Uh, known the house. And I have one other gem. You can pick <laughs> under the deck. You can see our little little pull top can, and uh, you, you probably never imagine you'd see this this in a conservation hearing. Um, but I'll bring this up anyway. The, hi the history of pull tops. You've come so a long the, way from the crayons. <laughs> Take your research seriously, huh? Uh, I had uh, my for forensic uh, archaeologist hat on, but anyway, the, the pull tops went out of uh, uh, distribution around 1975. So I'm just showing that that I didn't plant it there. Um, just showing this is uh, kind of contemporaneous with around the time when uh, yeah, your regulations went into effect, and I, I believe strongly that this. You know, because of the material and the wear and everything, this, this deck has been there for, for uh, quite some time. Um, that's what we're proposing. Take any questions. Thank Not you. about beer cans, though. No.
Uh, Jen, Brendan. Well, Tom, I, 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 do, I do like the bit about the pull top, but um, we have aerial photos, mm -hmm. so we can pinpoint it a little bit more than using, uh, using photography than pull tops. And uh, when was the house built? 54. 54, we can honestly say it wasn't there in 54. It doesn't look like it was there in the 75 area. I looked at the 75, I couldn't, as I say there, I yeah, can't, you can't tell. See, you can't tell. Uh, we, can, we can see it in 91, so we can see something square shaped in 91, so that's yeah, about it. For some reason, some of the newer photos, like the 86 and stuff, aren't on the, on the town site anymore. You know, it's also a very good place to look that we use quite often, it's Google Earth. You can go back quite a ways on Google Earth. So, mm -hmm. so um, the board will have to decide whether they, you know, have enough evidence that the the deck was um, previously permitted. Um, you know, staff doesn't really. It's going to be up to the board. The one thing I'm more concerned about with Tom is the the delineation. If you go on to um, who did the um, delineation for the wetland? Uh, we had just located that. Okay, we might want to go back out there and look at it because if we go on to the state GIS, mm -hmm. they're saying that that, that um, wetland might extend further inland and then also there's the presence of a coastal dune in that area. Okay, so you might have a coastal dune just seaward of that bank, so we're going to need to determine where that is. Yeah, yeah we, we can look and add that. Uh, we, we won't won't affect the most landward, landward buffer, but... And it, it may or may not. I mean, you only have 25 feet from that coastal bank. Uh, the dune is 50 feet. So, I mean, it, it could. I don't think it's going to significantly change the required mitigation, but it could increase it a bit. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to say it's going to increase it to the point where, you know, you'd have to redesign the house, but we're going to have to take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, that said, do you know when the shed went in? I don't. Okay, because that's something that you also may want to look at if you're going to use the shed as coverage. When did we say we could see it on the aerial? Between 91 and 75. The shed or the? That was the shed too. That was the shed too, so. That's about as 91. close. Yeah, we can see it in 91. Um, I don't think we looked on Google Earth for that one. Did we? Not I don't Our remember. Memories. We use both a combination of both, so that's something. But I'm more concerned with the, the dune delineation one, so we may want to go out there and kind of hash that out. Okay. Other than that, that's our only comments. All right. Thanks, Jen. Thanks, Brendan. Courtney. Uh, no questions. Kevin? No questions. Warren. I just had two. Um, I think we do have to verify closer on that. Um, when that deck was built. Um, but why is the limit of work on the other side of the pro on somebody else's property? On the north that side? Was one of the problems with CAD, it, it, some, it was a limit of work for the next property that, okay. that got left right. on so here. It's, it, not, it's not our limit of work. Okay. The one, you have two on the north side, so the one closest to the, your project is yes. yours. Okay. And the only other comment I would make is with sea level rise and everything else, here's a perfect opportunity to move back a little bit instead of going right to the 26 mm -hmm. foot um, to the top of the coastal bank. And that's just a, a comment that, you know, we hear everybody complain that everything's eroding and then it's our fault that it's eroding and mm -hmm. they want us to permit armoring but nobody, for some reason, ever wants to move back. <laughs> well, I don't think anyone's complaining that this one is eroding, but well, not it yet. could happen. Not yet. It could happen, but there's no moving back anywhere. And But if, the, if you can't prove that the deck was there, then they might have to move back. Okay. All set? That's it. Betsy. I found your presentation very entertaining. Thank you. Were you looking questions. forward to that? Have you heard something? <laughs> Pardon? Have <laughs> you heard? Were you looking forward to, or is, was that a surprise? You said you were looking forward to this presentation. Well, I didn't know what it was going to be. Yeah. <laughs> but you learned the system. It was a good presentation. Right.
I have no further questions. I imagine you surprised just about everyone. <laughs> Jamie. Nothing to add. Peter. No comment. No comment. Okay. Um, do we have a motion? I make a motion. Move to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Well, I want. I wanted to have more proof of this. Didn't you just ask for oh, more no, proof? Oh no, I wanted. I want the dune delineation. Yeah. Okay. So, so we'll I'm gonna at the. Yep. I want to withdraw that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I move to withdraw. Thank you. Tom, could you meet us out there next week? And we can take a look at all the different resources available, or maybe even this week, Friday? Friday. Maybe Friday. So if you have to do some quick tweaks to the plan, and I'm only saying that so we can get you on the uh, 10th hearing. It's a very light evening at night. Perfect for a continuum. Yeah, Friday. Friday would work for you? Yeah. Okay. All right, and then that way it'll give you time to get a, if you have to do a revised plan um, in for Wednesday, and then uh, continuing state to the 10th. Any recourse? And you can look for more pull tops underneath the deck. Oh, I scoured the place. I'm sorry. <laughs> I would look for okay, so we're looking at October 10th. It's good for you. Yes. My last question: Are we going to ask from trying to find more proof of the deck or not? We'll, um, we'll look for the more. The board wants more proof of the deck. So, look at I mean, I think the flip top was pretty full, but at the request of the applicant, I uh, move to continue this to October 10th. And I have one more question. Okay, second. All right. Uh, what's your question? The first. Um, the aerial you showed was from first one was from it was 75, 75. Yeah. and and it's where there's lots of vegetation now it showed that big blowout didn't it show a big sand blowout down below yeah oh yeah <coughs> down That's here the house right it's a big sandy blowout no it, it, it's what vacant it, there's no house there no, I know there's no house, but there's no vegetation. Yeah. Right. And that's then look. That's then Phil. It's Phil? I believe so. If you see behind all of these, how, behind, uh, I'm not sure what number this is, there's, I, I, th I think there's a, there was a large wetland here. You know, there's still some wetland there. Oh, and, and somebody some brought And I think some, of these, fill in. some yeah. of these lots were filled. They filled it? Yes. Oh. oh yeah. And then it naturally vegetated. Yeah. Huh. I mean, you can, you can tell because it's not. You have all these like interdunal wetlands mm -hmm. in that area. Yeah. Yeah. Huh. Okay. Anything else from the board? The Anything from the public? The applicants. Or? All right. Um, all those in favor of continuing the hearing until October 10th, say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Thank you, Tom. Hey, thank you. I'll bet there are not that many people in the room who remember those flip tops. <laughs> but there, I'll bet, I'll bet there are a few on the board who don't. I'll bet you had a necklace made out of them. Yeah. More than you think. All right. More than we'd like to admit. <laughs> Thank you. Well, those, those young people who started early. Yeah. You know. <laughs> well, everybody would like, wouldn't have any trouble admitting they're not alone. <laughs> Oh. Okay, next we have Michael and Cynthia George, 108 Gansett Road, Woods Hole, Massachusetts, for permission to construct and maintain proposed terraces, stone stairways, installed dry wells, a fire pit, and retaining walls, and all associated utilities, clearing, grading, and landscaping. Uh. Um, once and we're taking these together or Sounds sequentially? Yes. Mike, do you want to open these two simultaneously? Oh, that, that would work. Okay. That would be helpful to you. Do you okay. know how to get to your presentations, Mike? Go into the little folder. No, in the folder. There you go. I think you are the two bottom ones, sheet one and sheet two. Okay, so we are going to, at the same time, open and hear um, a request to amend the existing order of conditions, same property, 108 Gansett Road, Woods Hole, Massachusetts, 
Request to amend the order of conditions DEP 25-4310 to reposition the proposed path and embedded stone staircase, reconfigure the approved plantings, remove existing lawn area, and expand proposed buffer restoration plantings to completely fill the no disturbance FWR buffer zone A on the property. What about me? Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. I didn't mean to overlook you. You can't see all those big pile of stuff here. Could I have one? Could I have one? Yeah. How the hell did I? I think we're all still a little disoriented from the new furniture. Yeah, yeah, that's what it is. It's not you, Mike. That's never me. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> uh, my name is Michael McGrath. I'm a registered engineer and professional land surveyor. I work for Homes and McGrath. We filed both the request for a minute order and the notice of intent accompanying me tonight is Jen Stevens uh, and um, Teresa Sprague. And we're going to talk about this project. The first one I want to talk about is this request to amend the order. Um, uh, Being prepared. Mike, do not hit that screen. Careful on the screen. Yeah, just remember it's not a projector screen. Do you have a little? Uh, do you have a little smushy thing? A little. Don't you have a, a little a smushy thing? Well, the, I had one on the back of my head, but they well, took yeah, it off. I, I won't touch yeah. the screen. Don't you have a right. laser? Don't you have it the laser wouldn't well work. It really doesn't. Your little pointer thing. Hard to work with, uh, polish. It's just a normal pointer from and the C antenna off. The other possibility Betsy's is car. to use the mouse. <laughs> the pointer, Jen. The pointers don't work on the screen. The mouse may. Right, Mike, I couldn't get the, the mouse to do what I. Oh, all right. <clears throat> you can use the little hand. You can't see the mouse. I can use the well, little. Well, you see the hand on the. You can also on use the, the little highlight. The computer in use front of pointer him? thing. Is the computer on in front He's of you? He's doing fine. He's Let's got the on. mouse. Yeah, but you, you can You missed me last week. I tried to put white out on this. <laughs> <laughs> I will not touch the screen. <laughs> I've lost all track of it. Yeah, yeah. Yes. This particular land is at 108 uh, Gansett Road. It's a large lot. And uh, I'm only showing the portion within jurisdiction. And this is the portion that was previously subject to an order that allowed the construction. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Sir, gentlemen, gentlemen, um, could we please have quiet? You could welcome to the, take a break in the hall if you need to. Um, and so what is going on here is we have some resource areas. Obviously, that's Buzzards Bay. Then we have a rocky inner tunnel shore. Then we have a velocity zone that goes across with this line that's, and then we add the 25 feet, which is your uh, presumption. And then what we did was we defined the coastal banks as shown on the, um, it's a tan line. And then we added the, the uh, resource area A, buffer line, which is 50 feet back from the top of the coastal bank. And then we show you the resource area B buffer line. Your regulations say that if we fill the resource area buffer A completely, then we will have satisfied and we can do work in resource area B without any more uh, compensatory plantings. So I think it's appropriate that you understand that first, and that's what we're trying to show, that we're going to fill your res res resource area buffer A completely. I used to stutter, so sometimes words get stuck. So Teresa Sprague should probably quickly describe the uh, plants that have been designed for that area. Okay, thank you. I do, but you know what? I'm going to be honest with you. I'm a math user. <laughs> so, um, hold on. Give me a thing. I might get
um, approved plan. So this plan was um, submitted as a restoration plan for some previously um, unpermitted um, clearing within the areas that are shown. So we have this area, this outline was basically the outline of the area that had been previously cleared um, without a permit. Um, at one point it had been restored and then um, the invasive species were not managed and the invasive species took over and somebody came in with a brush hog and basically just cut it to the ground um, down to the bottom of the coastal bank. So you can see here that we have this area um, within the B zone that I'm shading in red and then everything else that's shown in yellow and then green down here in the coastal bank was within the A zone and, um, and the coastal bank itself. The difference between the approved plan and what we're proposing today is that this area in green that I'm showing here in green, which is currently existing lawn, we're proposing to remove the mitigation planting that or the restoration planting that was previously proposed in the buffer zone A <coughs> and put that into buffer zone B. So the plan that we're proposing, other way around, other way around. Other way I'm sorry, <laughs> remove from the buffer zone B and put in buffer zone A, thank you. Um, so basically what we're looking at here is um, what we're proposing now. So that area of the B zone right here is going to go back to typical landscaping and then this area that's lawn within the A zone um, will be totally planted out. So I put together a little summary um, here on Here we go. So um, just a quick summary. The approved plan dated June 20th, 2017. The goal of that plan was to remove uh, managed invasive plant species and restore, restore native vegetation to the previously disturbed areas. Um, what we had put together was a total of 2,698 square feet plus or minus in B zone, 11,411 square feet in zone A, and 17,271 square feet on the coastal bank. With that area of lawn in the zone A, 6,222 square feet. So we we're looking at total management and restoration area within conservation jurisdiction of 31,380 square feet. The plan that we're proposing dated August 10th, 2018. The goal is to manage invasive plant species, restore native vegetation in previously disturbed areas and within the existing lawn within zone A um, as part of mitigation for what is going to be proposed in just a few minutes. So the new plan um, in zone B where it will be zero um, restoration mitigation that will be converted to um, landscaped area typical. Within zone A, we're now looking at 17,633 square feet, which includes that 6,222 of existing lawn that will be converted to native plantings. And then the 17,271 square feet on the coastal bank management will continue. So we're looking at a total management um, restoration mitigation area of 34,904 square feet. Um, I do have some numbers that um, question here as far as what we're proposing for an increase in vegetation. So the previous plan, um, we had proposed 10 trees, 636 shrubs, and then um, 614 um, bare berries part of the ground cover, as well as the reseeding of the area for the restoration. And the new proposed plan, we're still proposing 10 trees, 956 shrubs, and we are increasing some of that ground cover layer of the bare berry um, just slightly. So we're adding 320 shrubs. I know a question that is going to come up, and so I'm going to address it immediately, is we are proposing right around the pathway some lower vegetation. Um, you can see in the plan here that right directly around the area where the path is going to be relocated, we are proposing some low bush blueberry in that area. Of the 320 additional shrubs um, that we are proposing, 209 of them are the low bush blueberry, and then there's additional 111 larger shrubs, including bayberry and um, beech plum. So hopefully that will address, and our, obviously our concern is not wanting to put up a wall of vegetation right along the pathway that's going to grow into the pathway and need management in the future. The idea is to um, just be able to maintain that access without having to prune back any vegetation that might go into the path. So with that, I'm happy to um, answer any questions about the proposed um, restoration plan. Thank you, Teresa. Um, 
Lisa, did you submit that letter that you had up on the screen earlier? I did not, but I will be happy to submit it to yeah. you. Okay. Any, I just any it additional stuff yes. that we haven't received, yes. like in a normal hearing, we're going to need to receive a Absolutely. copy of it. Yep, so. I have a copy of it with me that I'm happy okay, to turn right. in, and Thank I can you. email you additional copies. Okay. Um, so we're going to go through this one, and then the next um, Just, you know, if the board is comfortable with the... Uh, I would prefer to have some sort of, and I know Lori's going to bring this up, if the board allows the lower vegetation in that area, the path, I know that patio, well, we haven't gotten to that path part yet, but yeah. um, there's a patio being built right up against that, so I'm kind of concerned about that, and also how we're going to delineate that path, so is there any proposal for a single rail or something like that to delineate that path? Yeah, and I think um, Jen Stevens will uh, present that in her um, landscape design plan that they'll be presenting next. Okay. Well, I think, uh, Madam Chairman, we might want to go through this, but we may want to leave this open yep. while we review the other right. proposal as well, because there may be. Okay. I do have some concerns, uh, not, well, with the planting proposal, mm -hmm. I'm not quite sure. I mean, Lobo, that's a pretty exposed site, so I'm not quite sure if Lowbush Blueberry is going to really mm -hmm. be an appropriate plant that's, that's going to do well there. Right. Um, yeah, I think mast in this area, it should be fine. It was, it was not something that I would propose to use extensively throughout this particular area. So none of the planting in the rest of the plant has changed. Has changed, than, yeah. Exactly. Um, we did um, upgrade our CAD, so it looks slightly different, but that's just because I have a new designer in the office who actually knows how to use CAD better than I do. So there's some slight changes in the key, but other than that, um, there's no change to the rest of the planting. That's the only change um, with the addition of more bayberry and beach plum throughout these areas and these areas within the A zone and then the small shield those plants. Yes. That, that right. That. So there's taller plants in front of that, mm -hmm. and then um, it goes right into beach plum and bayberry growing right up in here. Okay, that's it for right now, Madam Chairman. All right. Uh, let's see. I have questions on the other plane. Okay. Maury. I just have a couple questions. Um, Jen actually covered most of them, but um, when you talk about um, putting the geotech cloth or the, the mat down, how are you going to protect the existing plants? The, um, the natives. When we blanket the bank with, yeah. the, uh, with the erosion control blanket. That you're going to plant with a seed, am I correct? Right, exactly. So we work around any vegetation that's there, similar to um, other projects that I think you've seen where we've managed to put the blanket around any large vegetation. Frankly, there's very little um, tall vegetation. Um, it was mainly, everything was covered with porcelain berry up here. So I am presuming that there may be some um, shrub species like viburnum that I know were existing in there that may be degraded and we may flush cut and allow them to regenerate from the root and blanket over that. That's the next question. So when you spray this all with a herbicide, mm -hmm. how do you prevent, you know, you're going to flush cut to them, them to protect them. How is that not going to affect them? The Something. sumac. Right. So we, this is a practice that we do quite often, um, and we work around any standing vegetation that we know is not going to be in danger of breaking, splitting, or falling. So what happens oftentimes is after we remove the invasive vines, there'll be shrubs like viburnum is a really good example of one, arrowweed viburnum, that gets very leggy. And then as soon as we remove the invasive vines, we get a storm and they snap. So if we flush cut them prior to management, they regenerate very rapidly from the, stra uh, from the um, root system. So they'll put in three, four feet of growth per year um, from the established root system. Um, we do this often also with sumac um, on other sites. And we flush cut the sumac, we work around it, and it regenerates. So we're not treating, like with other um, invasive vegetation, we're selectively treating the vines or the stumps. We're flush cutting and working around. And at Gunning Point, we actually flagged out where we had um, viburnum, et cetera, and we flush cut and it's are you completely flag, Are you going to flag the sumac? and We can flag name? those areas, absolutely, yes. And um, the other question, um, the mechanical, what is your mechanical approach? So the mechanical approach is basically um, going in with a low ground pressure um, 
Bob can't really grab them. That mini, actually a mini excavator, yeah. so like a JD35 with a root rake and a grapple and sort of I'm really the vine. The reason I'm asking this, you guys, I have gone to a couple of these sites and I know it's a one to five year. Um, some of them are two years old and they look worse than before. And I'm really concerned that um, I know that the invasives are, are, are bad. Um, but we have places on that are really extreme out on uh, Penzance that we've allowed Rosa Rugosa to grow because it's so strong and mm -hmm. hardy. And I'm looking at low bush blueberry that are usually in woodlands, not on the oceanfront. Mm -hmm. So I'm really concerned about, I mean, the bearberry is usually far more salt tolerant yeah, and, and enjoys it there. Mm -hmm. So I, I just, I'm with, Be with Jen on that. I'm really concerned about the low bush blueberry okay. and how much of it you have in areas um, that, uh, are going to basically be denuded. Mm -hmm. I mean, when they say mechanical with an excavator, they rip out every single thing on the coastal bank that is not native. And you just said that most of it is not native, so probably 90% of that bank. I think you said 80% actually. Uh, 85% of that bank is going to be clear cut, just so we don't get the shock neighbors and right. they, on TV. They know right. that they're just going to see a big, huge thing of zero vegetation almost, and a big jute mat that's going to be put down. It will. And my concern is, is that I'm looking at this one to five year management, and honestly, I've been to some of these that are three or four years old, and they still look like bomb went off. So if you could give some of us, especially me, mm -hmm. some sites that will prove to me that this is working, that it's not just the denuding of coastal banks, sure. um, it would be wonderful. Absolutely. Because that's why I get really upset, because when I see where there's nothing growing back, yes. um, you know, and you know, then they're going to want to armor it, because you know, now the thing's going to be, you know, I don't even know, is this Brown. armored? I didn't go off the coastal bank to go look. Is this site armored? There yeah. is um, some Or is it just stones, stones at the bottom? I think um, it's just stones at the bottom of the bank. It's yeah. loose. It's not a, it's not a. So after you get in there and, you know. Mm -hmm. and I, well, I the think, bank work itself will all be done by hand. So this is, it. I, I can. Well, you don't say that in the narrative. You said you're going to mechanically do it. We say mechanical and hand removal. So obviously on these steep slopes, we're not bringing machinery down onto the coastal bank. We're talking about these relatively flat areas up in the A zone. Where is, would you point to me where the flat area is? So the contours, I don't have, um, for some reason, and I'm not seeing contours on this site, but this area up here is all relatively flat. So the lawn right would be mechanically removed. We'd probably use a sod cutter all up in through here. And actually, I can pull up the land management plan. There's some great pictures there. Um, well, if you take a sod cutter, then you're going to be ripping the sod up? We would be removing the sod before we plant it into it. Well, you yes. use herbicides all the time. Why wouldn't you just nuke it with your herbicide? Well, we use herbicides selectively, so we don't broad foliar spray. So we, we prefer not to broad foliar spray. I mean, that's something that... So this is all going to be done stem cut? This is mostly all done stem cut, absolutely. Yes. Is that after you rip it out and then something so pops up? The areas that I'm talking about that we would be using some mechanical removal, now these pictures were taken back in 2017, but this area here, all of this area up in here is relatively flat, and you can see that. Then the bank drops off quite steeply. A perfect example would be um, the project that we did at the Cape Codder Condominium Association. It's got a very, you know, other than the, um, it's got a very flat level area in the buffer zone, and then the bank drops sharply um, down to the stones at the bottom. Okay, so that, that, I'll go look at that one. Yeah, that's that's a fantastic example. I mean, they example. don't have water in front of that one, am I correct? I mean, it's no, they quite do. a ways. No, it drops right down to, right down to Buzzards Bay at the Cape okay. Cotter, yeah. So it's a, it actually looks exactly like this. Okay. So Good. all That'd of the work good. that we did on the bank itself was literally hand work where we had people roped in and scaling down and treating the vegetation, but the work that we did at the top of the bank within the, um, within the buffer zone was mechanically removed. And it's a very similar um, situation. A lot smaller area though, am I correct? That was 45,000 square feet. Okay. Oh, yeah. I have, it's I bigger. Have, yeah. It's bigger. It was yeah. bigger, it's much bigger. bigger. I, again, I just am very concerned about the no, erosion aspect here and, mm -hmm. you know, the, the... And without a doubt, and we have at this Conservation Commission's request and that other commissions requests, we post signs throughout the area saying that there's land management and restoration in progress so that passersby or concerned abutters or concerned neighbors who maybe didn't come out for the hearing understand exactly what's happening with the management on site because there is without a doubt an ugly, I call it the ugly duckling stage. Before the stage, purge, right. And, it's, and, it's, and it looks like a bomb went off is mm -hmm. exactly, your description is apt.
Well, I appreciate that, but I, I really am not pleased with the blueberry. Well, we can so. certainly change out the blueberry, and we can look for alternatives for that. I mean, the obvious, the, the only point of doing something low in that area was simply to prevent it from growing over into the path and becoming something that people... I'm not are. actually, the path area, I totally understand. Yeah. But that whole area to the, is it to the north? Right here to the north. Yeah, that, yeah. that's and a huge this, area. And then this area right here to right. the south. And so the path can, I totally understand, otherwise yeah. it's going to grow in. So. Yeah, exactly. So we could certainly look at switching that low bush blueberry species out with species. Yes. Yep. Thank you. All set? Yep. Kevin. You're kidding me. No question. <laughs> <laughs> Courtney. Um, I, there's not much I can add to Maury's comments or Jen's. I agree with them thoroughly. Okay. You just you just put the wind out of my sails. Jamie. We need we need stuff that can grow to there or not. Dial. Absolutely. I mean, one of the reasons we're proposing black cherry, which is something that we almost never propose, is because that's the only thing growing on that site. It is. <laughs> so we're, we're putting it back. Yeah. Jamie. I like it. I have no comments. Other than that. Peter. No questions. And Steve. No questions. All right. Okay. So we're going to just hear on the next one. I would, I would, I would keep this one open while we're right. in there. Just and maybe back and forth. There's yeah. um, some modifications because I have some concerns with the notice that implicate this one. So, or actual. Yeah. I will leave my, uh, my Yeah, just leave that up. It's gone. What does that mean? Oh, all right. Uh. My name is Michael McGrath. Uh, you've heard my inter introduction, I'm going to introduce um, Jen Stevens. So, Jen. Hello. Um, I'm with Matthew Cunningham, Landscape Design. We've prepared a, pl a plan for the entire um, property. Um, this section's focusing on the area uh, on the ocean side of the house, which is within conservation jurisdiction. Um, the current enforcement order, which was executed under the prior ownership um, clearly, now that there's a new owner, um, it's taken him quite some time to get a knowledge of the site and what he and his family imagine um, this could evolve into. Uh, this is going to be <coughs> a legacy property for the George family. So it's taken quite some time to come up with a plan, and we appreciate your patience in allowing us to do that. So. The proposed amendment to the existing enforcement order is reflective of the desired plan um, as a whole. So the plan is to, oh, I'm sorry, I should be better with technology. Um, the plan is to remove the existing dwelling. Uh, the existing house, we are actually not pushing the proposed house closer to the ocean. We're maintaining the alignment on the north-south. Um, obviously, the configuration of the new building, it's, it's a much builder, um, bigger structure, it has different geometry, but we're trying to keep the main volume of the house in the footprint of the existing dwelling. Uh, there will be a pool garden to the south of the building, and then because we'd like to vegetate all of Zone A, we're lifting the lawn area up using retaining walls so that they have a usable amount of lawn up at the level of the house. And there we are proposing a, a sunken terrace with staircases that move down. And so that will be pressed down close to the elevation, the existing elevation of zone A, which is part of the reason why we were hoping to have a bit of a transition zone of lower growing native plants that would then taper up as you move um, down the bank. So the, the area which uh, we had asked Teresa to look at using more of those low-growing natives, like the low-bush blueberry, is kind of in this zone that I'm outlining. 
Um, obviously, you can imagine the owners would like to preserve as much of their incredible view as possible. So um, we would be happy to look at other low-growing natives in lieu of the low-bush blueberry um, to satisfy the requirements because of the exposed um, condition. The current house, lost my mouse. Um, currently the, and you can maybe elaborate after, but the, the existing home, all of the roof leaders currently daylight at the toe of the lawn slope. Um, and we'll be taking all of the impervious surface of the roofs, the terraces, collecting and conveying to on-site infiltration and dry wells. Um, what else? Um, the, the palette of plants that we're planning on using in zone B, and, and honestly the rest of the property is going to be predominantly native, um, something our office um, gets really excited about. So we are um, going to probably integrate some non-natives, um, hydrangeas, Cape Cod, they don't exhibit any invasive tendencies, so we're hopeful that um, the board is okay using those outside of the resource area. Um, and the rest of the palette will be predominantly native. I can pull up planting plans if you'd like. So. I might need some assistance, assistance Jen, but let's see. You got it or you need uh, help? X. Mike, did we get, Jen, did we get a copy of your planting plan? Yeah. No, I have copies with me. Okay. Not enough for the whole, for, individually but we're gonna I'm gonna need to see those and the board's gonna need to see that so that's right only the part that's in our, our jurisdiction, jurisdiction right, right. Uh, is it just is it the planting plan in our jurisdiction or is it the rest of the property um, it's for there's the entire property or we have we have a plan um, for half the property which is the coastal side okay so yeah, we'll need to see that where Lexar that's not mine bear with me Do I have to eject Teresa's first? Mine's the purple. I checked all those. Ooh, microphone. those yours? It said it couldn't open it. I wonder if it's a issue with the version. Uh, let me try this one. I have a printout. Can we do it the old fashioned yeah. way? Do it the old fashioned way. So I'm sorry. I don't know why that's it's okay. Um, it might be a Mac PC issue or For the board to share, do you have copies for the board to share? Uh, mm. All right, we'll put it in the middle of the only of the one. 
Why are you here? Pardon? Why are you here? What are you showing us? So we are showing the proposed planting um, outside of zone A. So this is the zone A line. I, I can't see anything because of the lights. Thank you. So this is the, um, the zone A line. I see this. And we're planning on vegetating everything in zone A. This is zone B. So because we are satisfying or filling zone A, we are able to do work in zone B according mm -hmm. to the bylaw. Um, we're planning on MP, or Nerva Pennsylvania, yeah. so this will be predominantly Bayberry, so it's in keeping with the yeah. coastal buffer. Um, we would like to mix in some hydrangea for seasonal interest. They are not invasive, but we could also do beach plum if you wanted to see this area exclusively native. Um, we were imagining there would be in the area that is outside of zone A a transition of um, beach grass um, or something that's going to keep it low and you know, easy to keep um, tame from the perimeter maintenance path on the lower level. Um, up at the top of the wall, we were imagining uh, prairie drop seed, which is a nice um, native grass. There is an existing privet hedge on the property um, a lot that forms the boundary between the two, um, the native from the south and Mr. George's property. We would like to recreate that hedge of privet. Um, obviously not the invasive privet. Um, up against the house, this is kind of the edge of zone B. So, you know, we are going to probably use some more domestic and domestic planting once we're up at the house level. Um, but like I said, we, we could do exclusively Nerica in this zone with beach plum <coughs> if hydrangeas weren't something that you no. wanted to see in that area. It's, it's good okay. you have it because that's one of the questions I would ask I was Mike. what Betsy was looking for. Excellent. Oh. We're going to need to keep that plan yeah, for our record. Thank you. Thank you. And also submit it. All right. Right, so. Yes, all please. No, important. don't worry about it. Do you need it? That? We're sure. all learning. <laughs> So I'm happy to answer questions. I know, Jen, you had a question in the earlier presentation about how we plan on delineating the beach path or yeah. the, the four-foot-wide path to the lower beach. Right now, we are planning that that would be um, a lo mown lawn path. Okay. Um, and then the, the staircase itself is proposed to be stone treads set into the slope. Um, if you're concerned about, you know, a mown path, wandering, migrating, we're happy to delineate that with a stone edge of some sort or, you know, a, a wood edge, whatever the commission likes to see in a, in a situation like that. So um, we're happy to do that. Okay. Sure. Thank you. A lot of times people lose those lower single rail composite heads just delineated a stone wood path. If it's acceptable to the board, that would be fine with it with the staff as long as we delineate that grass path going down to the water. Okay. Um, and thank you for providing that. It clarifies what you were saying. Thank you. I, I think it's important that we describe quickly the actual work that's going to be uh, in, uh, constructed. Uh, there's, a, there's a series of retaining walls, but while why they're labored retaining walls, if you look, it shows the proposed elevation. Proposed elevation there is 31.8 and it's 29 at the base, so it's slightly over, it's less than three foot tall. Then the next step comes up and it's 33.2 here and 31.8 there, so these are shallow retaining walls. And so it, then there's this arc of a retaining wall. If you bend to the site, the building it has got um, basically a flat area that's maybe the width of this room from the back of the house and then it drops down uh, probably six feet. And so what this is doing is they're proposing to fill that and then there's a circular retaining wall and if you look at the grades here, um, the outside grade is 30 and the inside grade is, I can't read it, I think it's 30. I can't read that, I'm sorry. 34? Uh, 36. So it, it is a, about a six foot wall at the highest. There are stairs that lower, that allow people to walk down on that side, plus there's a fire pit uh, area that's being constructed in that area. So the pink line is the limit of your jurisdiction. And um, so uh, at, 
on the regulations, if we fill up the uh, resource area buffer A, then we don't, we can do whatever we want at resource area buffer B. And we have accounted for the drainage of the different areas as shown by the subsurface leaching. So I'd be happy to any, answer any questions about the engineering portion of the site. Okay, thank you, Mike. Jen. Um, yes, Mary, just do, and I'm gonna turn it. Maybe I'll let Betsy handle this, Mike. Mike, yeah, it is true that once you fill up zone A, you can do work in zone B, but it doesn't mean you get exclusive carte blanche in zone B to do whatever you want. You always have to provide um, some sort of, Betsy, what's the terminology? Improvements to, you have to, an improvement. An improvement to the area. So and it could include <coughs> planning native landscaping, which is why God I said. Thank you have Jennifer's landscape plan to accompany your engineering plan because she answers Betsy's question. When you first One of said my that, questions. Betsy grabbed her book and looked at me and went like this. So, um, But the, the only question I have, Mike, on the engineering part of it is the, the stone walls. Or Jen or Mike, I'm not sure who's going to answer this. The stone walls, when you kind of um, are bringing that, those retaining walls up to make those lawn areas and kind of delineate those lawn areas versus the bank, how high are those walls? So roughly? at the, um, so these, uh, yeah. These walls are terraced, so the first wall is, is almost four feet. Okay. And the second wall is only about two feet. So okay. at this point, the exposure is actually the highest. It's almost eight feet. And then this almost meets grade, and then as you get to this point, uh, it's about seven, six and a half, seven feet tall. And so how do you construct those? What's like your overjig to put those footings in or anything like that? Um, probably about three feet on the, the toe of the wall, on the lower side of the wall. Okay. Um, so those walls are coming awfully close to those buffer zone A areas, which is another reason I was concerned with the use of the low bush blueberry in those areas. Um, if the project is to go forward proposed as it is, might the board might condition it that some of the restoration work needs to be done before the construction of, of the terraces and the walls and everything. So we want to make sure that you have enough room to build those walls once that mm -hmm. the restoration area goes in. We, we've offset um, a five foot perimeter strip from the base of the walls, which we imagine would be like a P-stone walking path. Um, so that would be the area that the men would be working. Um, so if, the, if this zone had to be filled with plants prior to um, beginning the construction of these walls, mm -hmm. they would have to work within that five foot zone and essentially work their way out. We um, kind of always usually like, or at least staff likes to see more of a 10 foot limit of work just to give people, um, you give the contractors the room to work without you know, destroying the recently planted either restoration or mitigation plantings. Um, if the board's comfortable with the five foot, considering it's not a foundation or a septic, staff would not be happy, but would accept that. Okay, that's it. Thank that was you. my biggest concern was the footing of those walls. Thank you, Jen. Brendan, no? Maury. Let me start with you. Um, what are the, how much fill, Mike, where are you gonna put that fire pit for those contour changes? Uh, I don't know. Um, about two feet, not even two feet. It's hard to see, but. Um, it looked like two feet, but we usually want the cut and fill calcs. Right, cubic yards. I don't think we have cut and no, fill calcs. I didn't do any calculations. Um, and? This area here is actually um, I think afflicted with some of the nastiest invasives currently. It was that weird kind of odd shape in Teresa's first plan. So although it's outside of zone A, um, we're gonna be essentially removing all of those invasives using the same techniques that Blue Fox would be using. Um, and this is where we'd be smothering this very small fire pit with a big colony of bayberry. So it's actually gonna create um, Oh, it's an improvement for sure. It, yeah. It, yeah. So, but I can't speak to the exact volume of, of fill, but it's about uh, probably 18 inches based on the contour. Mm -hmm. Is the orange line the limit of work? Because it's not on Mike's legend. Yes. Okay. 
It's not on the legend on your plan. That's the only reason I'm asking. It might be there because I miss things, Mike. But yeah. all right, I just didn't know if it was so a fence. I the orange line up there is the limit. Yeah, just want to make sure. That's all. Thank you. All right, uh, Kevin. No questions at this time. Courtney. Um, no questions at this point. Betsy. Mm -hmm. I I have two questions. One is so so I agree that the planting work has to be done first and or at least the restoration of the bank well yeah well here's the here's the issue you're you're planning to bring equipment in to do this so that all has to be in and out before these walls get put in I'm just thinking about the sequencing of mm -hmm. yeah I think a sequence is going to have to be put together here because the other part of this is we like to have at least one full management year before we restore the woody vegetation or else we're treating resprouting vine material around the plants that we've just put in so um, we, I mean I think the restoration has to get underway immediately as a form of the invasive management and seeding and blanketing and stabilizing the area um, once that's done, then the walls can be built and we can plant around that, the construction that's happening mm -hmm. on the site, but we do need to get our equipment in. And I don't know what the construction timeline is on this project, so Jen can answer that. So, uh, well, the construction timeline is going to follow the restoration of the Coastal Bank. This Coastal Bank has been under an enforcement order for a number of years. Mark remembers this one. He's in the audience over there. So, um, I'm, I'm, I'm glad to see it's finally getting restored, but it, it needs to get restored before those walls are built, or at least your work has to begin. Yeah. So. Uh, I know that Mr. George uh, is planning on approaching this project in phases, and the, the main house would likely be phase two, so it would probably be two years before this would begin construction. Okay. So it's very much it's very feasible for that first year, year and a half of you know heavy lifting in the buffer to take place. Well, the project... The, the proposed house project and the terraces are under the assumption that the zone A is going to be filled. So we're going to need, the board's going to need some comfort level with that, given the history of this property, mm -hmm. um, in order for the, the house to begin. So uh, it's good that the main house is phase two, and that'll give us a comfort level if the restoration work has begun. But the restoration work is, it's going to be conditioned that the restoration work has to have begun and been, you know, at least one year in prior to the construction of the walls and the terraces for the main house. Okay. Okay. I know I've seen a, a, a planning board referral for the, for the guest house already, so I know it, it's well, underway. What I'm saying is they have to get this done first. Okay. No, we're good. I'm, I'm not done. Okay. I'm not done yet. No, I, I, oh. I'm not surprised to know. <laughs> um, okay. Mike, I have another question. So the velocity zone here is elevation 23? Yes. And um, I'm just wondering, the tunnel below, I've always wanted, waited to hear Mike come with a 007 project again. What's the elevation of the bottom of that tunnel? 27. It's 27. So, how high a tunnel is it? Uh, I think the floor to floor, well, I think it'll have about an eight foot clearance. Um. But the intervening uh, landform is higher than elevation 23. Well, I'm concerned with the tunnel getting flooded in a major. Well, the undisturbed sure. ground is uh, elevation 29 in between, which is six foot higher than the highest wave. The elevation 23 is the top of the highest wave, and if you know anything about how this stuff works, it's mapped, but it's not mapped very well. In well, that. we're not getting into that, Mike. Well, I'm just so pointing saying, out that... What's, it, the what's the elevation of the of the terrace that's above the tunnel. I'm assuming this is a terrace here, right? This is a terrace? 
Yes. So you can walk out like this. Yep, so this is at 37, yeah, and this 30, is at 27. Okay, so, and so that's, so it's about 10 feet. Yep, so there'll more be more or less with, yeah, okay. Yeah, so the All right, that's my question. Yeah, sorry. Thank you. I didn't want to hear Mike's <laughs> discussion of Phoenix. velocity zones. But the ground I, I surface is it, six foot higher than the top of the wave in between. I'm done. Thank you. Thank you. Jamie. Almost as nice as my house. <laughs> I'm good. They're tearing it down. Yeah. <laughs> Peter. No question. Steve. Yeah, it's an amazing site. So what we are trying to do, just for, for my clarity, is we'll take each order separately then, Madam it's Chair? Uh, well, we will close them separately. Yeah, close yeah. the close order of conditions. And then the, the balance of the uh, notice of intent is for the um, <coughs> terraces, etc., cetera, stone walls. Correct. And, uh, mm -hmm. Having nothing to do with the septics or other systems at this point. No. Because they're outside I, the jurisdiction. Just, um, just for clarity, I just yeah. wanted to make sure. Yeah. Okay, fine. Then I, I have, have no other question questions. question for Jen. Um, as far as the sequencing and the scheduling and all that, are you, um, is that something you see us just conditioning or would yeah. you like them to submit anything? Uh, I think we can condition we can that. Condition. That's okay. fine. And then we can yeah. if you, the board feels more comfortable, we can condition a written sequencing. Yeah, I think yeah and you can say that there's yeah. no sign off on a building permit until. Uh, the building, the house is clearly beyond jurisdiction. Right. I'm not sure if the building permit's going to be required for the terraces and everything. It's something I'd have to ask, right. but. Would have them submit a, a written six foot wall or a ten yeah, foot wall. wall? Yeah, yeah. yeah. There, there would have to be a separate build, or there could be separate build permits for all the walls. Yes. I have a question, Mike. When does your client propose to begin the restoration of the coastal bank? That uh, is somewhat dependent upon the outcome of this hearing. Um, and weather i don't know if we're if this were to be approved this evening for instance if we would still have a window to begin herbicide applications if we would then just be exposing the site you know going into the winter exposed. no this is certainly a good time of year to undertake invasive species management um, as far as doing selective um, treatment uh, the herbicide translocates to the root system very quickly at this time of year um, so there's no concern about exposure it would really be dependent upon the property owner's timeline for construction, and, and I'm not aware of what that is, so. Okay. Well, just as long as the property owner is aware of the fact that Yes. it has to be done before any of the I, I, believe, I believe I'm going to leave that into. Um, yeah, I, that's perfectly perfectly reasonable that that's um, conditioned in the, uh, in the order, so. I'm okay. Sorry, I just have one um, Mike, is do, the fact that the walls are over four feet, are they shown anywhere in the plan, engineered walls? The four we feet have feet. not provided cross section stamp by structural engineer, no. Why? Mike, you know, we, we want those types of, you know, we like cut and fill calcs, you know, we want engineered walls on the plans, you know, we. I'm, Unfortunately, Usually always ask for this stuff. So when you say no and shrug your shoulders like you didn't know, could sorry, it be sorry. submitted later and yes, conditioned? Yes, we can easily submit. Uh, I'm fine with that. So I make a motion to clo close the he the first hearing, which is the amendment hearing, and take it under advisement. Second. Second. Okay. Anything else from the board? Anything from the public? The applicants. All right. All those in favor of closing the hearing on the amended order, please um, say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Uh, I'll make I would a just like to note that you, last time you changed your regulations, you eliminated the specifications for, sub for submissions. So you should put back 1099. It's no longer uh, issued with your regulation. Thank you. I want to make a motion to close the hearing and take it under advisement. Second. Okay, this is the notice of intent. Um, 
Any comments or questions from the board, from the public? All those in, in favor of closing the hearing say aye. 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 Opposed, aye. unanimous, so moved. Thank you. Yeah, thank, thank you all. Thank you. Thank I apologize you. for my technical difficulties. No, no, thank no, you. That, it was fine. <laughs> this stuff is brand new. Everybody's having trouble. That's it. Or nearly This everything. goes into the amendment. We just hope that well, we had the newer oh, version. Oh, there are two of them. All right. This is into the amended. Teresa's goes in the amended. This the amended. Yeah. This goes into the notice. This one, notice. This, this must be, is this the notice? Yeah. Okay, Mr. McGrath, when you walk away, you need to shut down your presentations. Thank you, Mike. You did this last week. Somebody was trying to present right. and your plan was on the screen. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. All right. Wow, I, I figured Mike, out how you, to do it. Yeah, did you, did you take your little USB? Did I give that back to you? Where is it? Check your jacket pocket. That's where you put it in last week. Oh, you, did you give it back to me? I think I did. Didn't oh, I? thank okay. you. Okay, all right. I just wanted to make Bye. sure you had it. Good Mike. night, Mike. Good night. All right, next we have a uh, continued request for certification of compliance. Brendan Zaldis at Al, lots four through 11, Pondlet Place and Pierce Place. Yes, Madam Chairman, we continued this last week so that the board could go out. We sent you all the materials. I'm not sure which board members were able to get out. And then there was some discussion um, whether or not the board was gonna feel comfortable about, what was that, Susan? Oh, okay. um, whether or not you were going to feel comfortable issuing a certificate of compliance with um, the language that was stated that you know they've just written into the the deed yeah. um, that the work can continue, or if this board would feel more comfortable with something like an additional five-year extension, as uh, Maury had suggested. So. I hope you are all able to get to the site or at least review the materials, and here we are. Is there anything you wanted to say, Mark? No. Okay. That's a I, perfect I understand. summary. <laughs> mm -hmm. I understand. Uh, so, um, does anybody have anything they'd like to say about this in a point of view, one way or the other? I went out to the site, and it actually looks really, really good. Thank from you. From all the years of work, you've done a really nice job. I think a five-year extension. I think they've done a really good job in keeping it every five years. I think it just keeps everybody on board. Um, homeowners might change. I think that the ones that are there now totally get it. They've, done a, they've really stepped it up and it looks nice. Um, but I think five years would be a reasonable, you know, because it is a, a management. Um, you know, every year you have to get out there to take care of it. And I think three years is. Yeah. Not if we're gonna enough. do, if you're going to extend this, I would say at least five years. At least five years. Yeah. I mean, were you asking for in perpetuity or for ten years? Yeah. The COC process would have been in perpetuity. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But yeah. five years is certainly reasonable. Yeah. Does anybody else have anything they'd like to say about it? I look. I looked at it, and I think they've done a good, nice job of managing it. Agreed. So I. I Kind of think more to hit, hit the nail on the head. And what about staff? Do you have a preference? Uh, staff would be agreeable with that. Um, Five year. What we're going to have to do then, um, because it's different, we'll have to withdraw the certificate of compliance, just submit an extension request for five years. We'll put it on next week. You don't even have to show up, we'll just vote it. Okay. Okay. Just so everything's clean and it doesn't get confusing. So you can verbally um, request the withdrawal of the certificate of compliance and state that you'll submit a request to extend for five years, if you'd like. Yes, um, yes, if that's okay with the commission. I, I wanna make sure that the certificate of compliance request is a placeholder for the request that's fine. for we extension. Can, if, if you wanna do that, if you feel more comfortable with that, we can just continue this to next week or the 10th until the extension request comes in and then mm -hmm. We'll hear them both at once, and then we'll 
approve one and you can withdraw the other one I mean that's fine I hate to have everybody come back but I just want to make sure everybody you know it's all yeah. done you know advertise uh, I mean public uh, open meeting law requirements and everything so that they're not voting something that's not on the agenda even okay. though we discussed it um, okay yep sir did you want to say something could you come up here if you do speak thank you if you just want to talk to Mark, that's fine. Yeah, the comment was um, regarding the duration of the extension and whether or not the commission would consider something longer than five years as it goes by pretty fast. And we've already done, we've done nine years of uh, consistently good work on this, on this project. That's going to be up to the board. Um, nine years because you had the uh, Permit Extension Act. That's right. Yes, you know. Yeah. The grace yeah. of the Permanent Extension Act. So I think I think five years is reasonable. I don't know. Uh, I think five years is reasonable at this time. Yes, you have done. They've done great work out there. We're not. The board's not taking any, or the staff is not not saying otherwise. Yeah. Um, just it just allows the board to to have a a level of comfort with the project. So I, I, understand. I think revisiting it in five years for newer commissioners. If there are newer commissioners at that time, is, is fine. Can we agree uh, generally that if the work goes forward over the next five years, as it has the past nine, that another five-year extension? I don't know if would I be a can reasonable uh, uh, agree to anything five years from now, Mark. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, I guess what I, uh, let me so ask it differently. Would the commission be open to a further extension after five years? That would be, depend on the sitting commission in five years. Yeah, they can't speak to that. So you better hope we're all still here. <laughs> <laughs> There's a long history to this project, as you yeah, as you remember. I do. So I think so I, mean, I think field trips in the yeah, sunset the days. Field yes. I think this gives them a comfort level, and I think this is a, a reasonable solution to the certificate of compliance request. Okay. Okay. Yep. I mean, you were going to do the annual reports anyway, so. Yes. Okay. All right. So we'll just continue it again until next week. And if you can get me that extension request, we'll put it right on the agenda. Okay. Fair okay. enough. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. All those in favor of continuing until October 3rd, say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. And we don't need to come back for that, you, you said? You don't need no. to come back. Unless you seriously don't trust us. Motion to move here. I'm sorry, what? We need a motion, so. Oh, I'm sorry. <coughs> I'm out of order. I make the motion. Thank you. Second. All right. Thank you, Excuse Mary. me. Thank you, Steve. Um, all right. So all those in favor of continuing till October 3rd, say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. So moved. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for doing a good job out there. Next. Madam Chair. Yes. We're moving on to orders. Can you check in the quorums? Because I think I'm not on a number of these. Um, okay, I don't do. I'm not on any, badly. Yes, Betsy, you're excused. I have the quorums. And Madam Chairman, I would ask that we take 28 Ashley Drive out of order, please. Sure. Um, yes, he's been very patient. Um, I've is, got him, Susan. Do you have um, all the quorums I have the, together I have the, somewhere? Yeah, I have them. Let me just make sure I, I'm I just them. asking. Oh, nope, yeah. I have them. Yeah. We are doing Ashley. Hang on, I'm just trying to make sure. Oh, yeah, right. Corny, you're on at least two of them. Good to see everybody. Bye, Dan. I'll see you next week. Yeah. <sighs> Betsy's not on it. Courtney, you're on at least form. three of them. Okay. Is that what you were asking, Courtney? Next week. Yeah, that's right. I just want to know. Yes, you're on at least three of them, Courtney. Okay, so we're going to do 28 Ashley Drive first, Madam Chair. Um, 
Yeah, I know. I got yeah, I guess I need a motion for that. Um, take a motion. motion to take them out of order and to proceed with 28 Ashley Drive Second. first. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Thank you. Opposed? Uh, quorum is Peter, Steve, Jamie, Mary, Maury, and Kevin. There you go. This is yours. Ashley Drive is the house right by the um, boat ramp. White's Landing boat ramp. Um, there does need to be a finding on this one regarding the, um, the top of the coastal bank and how that the project meets the setbacks for the historic coastal bank, which was altered for a town and state boat ramp project. Um, so that is an important finding to make. Um, other than that, the staff really didn't have too many concerns with the project itself, and I don't remember any real special conditions to you, Brendan, mm -hmm. the project. Um, Lori, can you just toss those in the file for me, these yep. photos? Uh, let me just grab my planner quick. I think that was, well, was good summation as far as I'm concerned. I don't seem to have any other nope. I had no nice. topics. Does anyone have anything? Nothing. Okay. All I'll right. A motion to accept to uh, issue the order conditions using standard conditions. Yeah, standard and standard special conditions that you and have. Accepting yeah. your postal bank. Second. All right. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, unanimous, so moved. Here go, Thanks Ken. for your patience, Ken. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. All right, now we'll go back to this sequence as printed. Grace Lance, or, yeah, I think we need a motion for that. Grace Lance. Grace Lance by the CLLC, 39 Juniper Point Road. Uh, the quorum, Courtney, Kevin, Maury, Mary, Jamie, Steve, Peter. Find Gracelands by the sea. I don't have anything. There it is. I don't have anything. No, this is a pretty oh, yeah. straightforward hearing. Yeah, what you, what you third want? of three. Yeah. The only thing was the um, the cedars by the steps to the southwest part of the property as that proposed walkway comes up. Mm-hmm. Um, very tight cluster of cedars there. Yes. Were they going to, I remember Mark was talking to them about that. Are they going to modify that walkway? Is that what Joel said? Yeah, I yes, think he said it gives you a little jog there. Yeah. Yep, yeah. yeah, to save them. So modify the proposed walkway. That's all we had, Madam Chairman. All right. Anybody else? Nope. It's all mine. I don't mind. A motion? I make a motion to accept as discussed. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Uh, Stephen Wasikowski, 42 Rivers Edge Road, East Palmet. This also was a pretty. They all were. Yeah, we, we, yeah. we had a nice little. Yeah. We did quorum please. first of efficiency last week. We did. We got the quorum as Courtney, Kevin, Maury, Mary, Jamie, Steve, Peter, and Mark. The only thing I have is move the mitigation planting to the area where the kayak rack is. All right. Uh -huh. Yeah. That's all I So have. the mitigation is going to have to be more freshwater wetland plants because that's more of a freshwater wetland down in there. So mm -hmm. that will have to be more facultative wet. Species. Oh, they didn't have a big. <coughs> oh, they do have. <laughs> I'll let Brendan pick them out. <laughs> did they even? Oh, yeah, they did. Beach they did. Pond, yeah. Virginia Rose. It won't be Virginia Rose. And they're still going right. to give us a tree, right? They're going to have to, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So we'll move mitigation. They, they're shrubs. proposing an Easter red cedar. Yeah. 
Yeah, the eastern red cedar can stay up there, but the shrubs um, go down below. The shrubs will have to. The composition of the shrubs. The composition is going to have to change, but that's fine. I make a motion to accept as discussed. Second. And then keep the cedar where it is. Yep. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Mm. Wigwam at the Wissett Trust, 8 Wigwam Road. They're not on this one, I believe. Brendan's got the Kwam. Okay. Which one was that? Oh, eight one. Wait, eight one. one. I got it right here. Peter, Jamie, Maury, Kevin. Wait a minute. Really? Yeah. That could be. If there this one's, meetings, this one's been carried over a long time. Yeah. Um, the only thing I had on my notes um, that we've discussed is there was a concern of the beach grass along the edge of the road to the north and east that it be woody indigenous instead of beach grass the the path was fine in beach grass no because that's an area that mark was concerned about yes. the area along yep. the road yep and then they did not give us to be honest there was a lot that was missing but we're here now so we'll discuss it underneath the the cedars where the rabbits ate all the plants um they never told us what they were going to plant. It just says understory to be restored. So just make sure you, whatever you think then is appropriate plant okay. under there. Mm -hmm. um, and the, I think one of the major discussions was the existing trees um, to be transplanted and they put them literally on the lot line. I mean, they're, they're three feet off the turnaround. The, the, and I think Mike said that, the, that it was 45 square feet of root ball, which would be about right, because they're huge. They're already all those trees are actually still in their burlap and ball. They've never been planted. They were just put in the ground and mulch put around them. So they'll they'll probably transplant really well. Where do you want them? Well, remember Mike was going to put them over in the old driveway area, mm -hmm. which would probably be more appropriate. Okay, planted. And I asked him what he's going to, you know, because. We wanted more mitigation planting where now the cedars are going to be moved to the east at the end of the turnaround just to fill that in with mitigation with, okay. with um, native plants. And let's see, um, there's no legend. Um, the path, why? Um, nope, that one was fine. There's a really big finding you guys are missing in this one. Yes, the dune. I, I'm getting to that okay. one. The dune on the. On the um, that they created the man-made yeah. dune. You have to find to make this work. Uh, well, you I'm have to have a finding that says that you accept the dune and the beach plants as mitigation planting. Well, we didn't. That's why we're going to discuss it. Okay. Um. But what, how does anybody else weigh in on that one? No, it's Jamie. No, I agree. That was all to be mitigated when they built the house back in the day with Woody Indigenous. And they were the ones that terraced. They took out the groin, am I correct, Jen? They took a groin out and they, I think I came into this project when it was being permitted, yeah. I think. I yeah, think there was another groin. Prior to me getting here, so. Because what was the guy's name? Bachman. No, the engineer. The original engineer? Wasn't the first one was Warwick Engineering, and then it went to Peter, Peter somebody. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's when I came in. Yep. And that was when they took the groin out. Okay. And that was a voluntary, they, they stepped the dune. Mm. And... Um, because they didn't want to put in the woody indigenous, they, so what they wanted to do is make it a beach grass dune, a terraced dune. A terraced dune. Um, <laughs> <laughs> which it really doesn't function as a dune. 
um, because, I mean, there might be some overwash there, but the, the beautiful dune they built to the north that totally eroded and they, they've come back for emergencies and everything else for that, that is a, a moving dune. This one up here really, I mean, I, I think he said that there were rabbits or something in it, didn't he? There were rabbits all over that There's place. There's rabbits all over that place. <laughs> Um, yeah, he said clovers. Yeah, yeah clovers. There's well, no, no, the clovers, no, the clovers, the clovers are were the down where they did the mitigation on the beach. Yeah, yeah the clovers well, actually were down the, the north. The dune. restoration. Yeah. When they did that dune restoration, he said down in that rocky um, intertidal down there, and it's, it is it's probably kind of beach, um, they nested there. But of course, you know, sea level rise and man made changes there, um, they got washed out to sea. Um, I, I'm, I'm just concerned that we're setting a precedent. I, I don't think it's, you know, if you just want to make an opinion that it's bad, but it's setting a precedent that if everybody else starts to do this, this is the slope, the, the regulatory slope that, you know, it kills us later because then we have to go back and fight for where our regulations are again. That's the problem. It's, you know, it looks innocuous, but then, the next board that has to deal with this, or administrator, this <coughs> project will immediately come right back to us and say, well, at, you know, wigwam, da-da-da, eight wigwam, you allowed this, and then the next thing we know, that's what we're doing. Or we're saying, well, that was a special situation. That really wasn't, a, this wasn't a special situation. It wasn't that they had no room, um, that, you know, it was an existing house. They tore down a little teeny cottage, and built this huge house literally in the coastal bank. So, but it was already revetted, which was a good thing for them because they already have that. But that's all I'm gonna say on it. I'm, I'm just concerned of the long, what, how this will boomerang on us later. And how do you feel, Jen, on that? I'm not gonna weigh in on that. Okay. Um, that's gonna be a decision for this board to make. Okay. You, you, we are kind of setting a precedent with that. Um, but the overall property is enormous and kind of vegetated. Very like, well vegetated. Yeah, very well vegetated. And going down the co causeway, it's natural. It's, for the most part, protected, and a majority of the work is just done in that little corner of... And that could be a finding. And that could be a that finding. That could be That's a finding, so this doesn't bite us yeah, in, in the back it's later. It's almost uh, how many acres? Of 16. Plum? Yeah, 16 acres of, mm, I'd say, looking at the 60 yeah. acre property. It's totally unbuildable, except for this little post I'm stamp. saying that, you know, it, 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 could, it could work into the board's favor. To make a finding that yeah. way, so it won't. We yeah. won't have yeah. Yeah, ramifications absolutely. later. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, in that case, you know, I think that would be a good finding. Um, this is a prim predominantly unbuildable lot. Yeah. Except for this little teeny spot that they maximized, and um, I did go check the bike path plantings, and they are viable. They really need to get in there and get the vines out. They also need to get the vines out of the cedars along the road because they're going to be taken over. So um, we'll make that uh, a condition that they manage the vines and the cedars, cedars along the causeway. And the bike path. Okay. Because that yeah. mitigation, we they, they, they transferred that mitigation yep. way up to the oh, bike I path. Know, I which, remember. And they also, um, they had an enforcement. Remember when they did, they um, tore up all the salt marsh, like three acres of salt marsh with a, with a culvert? It was before your time. I think it was before. That was before me. Yeah. Yeah, um, that was that was like in the me. '90s. So anyway, the, I if we can make that Before finding the that property. it's um, the parcel of land yeah. is naturally vegetated, blah blah land. blah. Yeah. Um, then I guess we. I think we did what we need to. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Could you make a note in there to make sure that the DEP access steps and signs are maintained? Chapter 91, public access steps. Uh -huh. Please. I live next door. I would propose a stipulation that if this guy does anything else in Falmouth, he just does it 
and keeps it quiet and doesn't file for a permit eventually. No, don't say that on TV, Kevin. You know, I mean, for all that we've gone through. Yeah. Okay. So you're comfortable with the finding? Yeah, I'll make the finding. I'll move to accept as discussed. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. All right, next so is like this guy or no? huh? Stephen and Susan Moore, 125 Little Neck Bars Road. All right, so the only issue, or the only outstanding issue, I think, with this one is the, oh, the, the quorum for this. Peter, Steve, Jamie, Mary, Maury, and Kevin. Um, there are two issues. They did modify the DC police seed plantings to get them away from the, the leach field, which was good. They weren't putting them over the leach field. They filled in the rest of the areas they were supposed to for the DC PC. The two outstanding issues I see are the installation of the non-natives along the road. When the RDA originally came to this board, which was reviewed by staff, um, and the landscaper, it clearly shows on the plan that those plantings were supposed to be native bayberry, winterberry, and viburnum. That said, prior to that, it was lawn. Mm -hmm. So that's the issue of whether or not the board's going to allow the, 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 um, them to retain the, the non natives that were planted. Um, inconsistently with what was presented under the RDA. And the only other issue I think is the, the little stormwater swale into the wetland, which I'm not happy about. That's the one thing I just don't like about the plan. Um, I think Maury's idea of building that up and maybe transplanting some of the um, plants over there might absorb some of that water a little bit better. Well, currently, they, when they redid the lawn, and it's an all-sod lawn, and it has a yellow sticker on it all the time, um, they pitched the entire thing right toward that wetland. And then they put, um, they did a really nice job as far as the, the mitigation planting over there after they got an enforcement. Um, and they took out all the ornamentals, and it's all natives. But they put a berm of earth, literally as wide as this table, and just plucked the plants in there. So now there's this berm like this, so and then the driveway. So they've literally made it an absolute sluice way. The entire driveway and the lawn all now are pitched right to that wetland. And I think that goes against all the things we try to make them do is to, to make it yeah, get right. away from the wetland. So I think that you know they, if they could pitch the driveway, they've already planted all that mitigation. So for them to rip that all out, take the earth berm out and you mean whatever. The mitigation between the driveway and the, and the, and wetland. the wetland. Yeah, yeah, that was done under the RDA. Right. That was where they got into a little muck there. No pun a intended. Lot of muck. Yeah. And that's been in all summer and it's established and it looks nice and it's doing its function. They got rid of the invasives. But the driveway, when it's built, needs to pitch toward the driveway and again put in the swale on the right side well it would be the east side of the driveway with the mitigation planting that is only six feet off the house which we do not allow it has to be 10 because we know what happens to it um, and I don't even think they did they tell us what it was mm -hmm. um, it could you know when they get done it could be uh, it's their choice whatever they put there but I just think that if that little pocket that's to the south was put down by the driveway the driveway pitched with a with a swale in there you know uh, to retain the water so it, instead of it pitching into the spillway because honestly if we start telling everybody it's okay to start discharging into wetlands I don't even think that that's in our reg that we allow that and I know they do have groundwater issues there, um, but they have not tried to fix it by changing the topography away from it. Um, 
The stuff behind the shed, again, I'm concerned. It's, it was vegetation, you can go out there, they, they cleared it all so they can put their rubbish cans or whatever, and now they're gonna plant it back. But again, it's literally a foot and a half off the shed. Right. Be realistic, they need that area behind the shed to put their rubbish cans. They're not gonna put them in their front yard. Um, so take those two little squares and the one up here the, 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 that's in yellow and put it down by the driveway and it would be beautiful because they already stated that they were having trouble with people coming from the bike path into their property. So this would even give them more protection that they're trying to achieve. But with native plants, keep their... their I think they left themselves some room behind the shed for the, for the barrels. But look how... It, Beth, uh, yeah, Beth. Um, Jen, it's... Um, Again, it's mitigation plants that are, what's the scale, 1 to 20. Mm -hmm. I know, I'm no, sorry. No, 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 I'm, I'm just oh, trying again, to figure we, out we how to write them. Again, we them, and it's literally three feet off the shed. Okay, I'll, I'll have a move them. Just tell me what you want to do. Well, I, I, they're <coughs> going to keep that clear. That's a no-brainer. I mean, we're never going to go back out there and go behind their shed. So let's put it where it does more good which is, because that's already got a really nice vegetated buffer to the wetland, and put so those. So move the shed plants to the east side of the driveway. And the ones that are on the south side of the house. And create kind of like a drainage. Depression. I don't know what you want to call it. Swale. Swale. Um, green garden. Green garden, green yeah. rain garden. Um, where they could go down low and at least at least it won't go all that fertilizer that's running straight across the driveway into the wetland yep. will now at least perk a little bit through the vegetation that will take it up and yeah. I think that would be an improvement. Okay, that's fine. And I think it would be, you know, the project would be pretty too. I mean, that's what they want. They, and then they can keep their ornamentals. Yep, and then keep the ornamentals along the road. Road. All right. So ugly, I do all right. I make a motion to. I got that. I can. I'm envision. I know exactly what you're talking about, Mark. Okay. Yeah. All right. So we have a motion. Second. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Opposed. Unanimous. So moved. Mark and Cynthia Albers, 177 Fay Road. This is the. Quorum. Who's on the quorum? Is that he had a quorum? Peter, yes, thank Peter, you. Peter, Steve, Jamie, Mary, <coughs> Maury, and Kevin. Who's that guy? Bless you. My dad sneezed last time. Yes, you're on the last one, Courtney. Hang on. What's the last one? Last She's one just torturing you. Courtney, just leave. Go. <laughs> you're fine. Go. <laughs> you don't need to. Just go. All right. This is, this is my plan. This is the, we had the core fiber roll array, the, 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 so the beach sand in the cobbly area, and then the uh, beach nourishment planting with the beach grass in front. Remember? Yes. Everybody? Did we get the meat? <coughs> um, did we get the what? The natural yeah. heritage. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, we got no problem. Misa. Um, oh, yeah, they were fine. Okay. Yeah, Misa See was ya. fine. Um, I like the, 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 the project in front of the house. I like the, the beach nourishment, the proposed beach planting to kind of build up that dune in front of that existing revetment that's right in front of the house. I like that portion of the plan. Um, I don't entirely understand why we're fiber rolling that bank, but I mean, it is an eroding bank. Want to stabilize it? We have our kind of theories why. Yep. Yep. Well, um, I, I have a problem with it only because it's not a threat to the. This again is a new structure, no new armoring, and theoretically they're trying to armor it. I mean, granted it's fiber roll, um, and it's only for the guest house, which they never moved back. That's brand new construction. That old don't move back thing. And if we don't have any sediment, you need sediment source. I mean, that's one of the reasons these beaches are starving. They want to nourish the beach, but then they're going to starve the beach by putting the fiber roll up. So it's kind of a. It's up to. I mean, you have proposed fiber roll 
you have approved fiber roll arrays yes, in the past. Yes, we have, but usually it's when something's in, de in danger. You know, mm -hmm. that the house is going to fall in or that, you know, it's right. been, you know, undermined. They, they never told us how much <coughs> this is eroding. Usually we ask, you know, how many feet per year or whatever. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I mean, I'm not totally against it. I just think that it's pointless. I mean, well, it's not just pointless. But I think that we're not allowing beach nourishment and sediment transport, which that's why everybody was screaming years ago to remove every groin and every seawall, which mm -hmm. was totally ridiculous because it was never going to happen. But that's why, because you have no more sediment transport to build beaches anywhere. And the other thing is, didn't this have an order for invasive control? Didn't um, Celine came come in front of us mm -hmm. to do? And there you go, everybody. When you go out there, I don't know what year this thing started, but it's been two two years anyway. And they cut every single thing down, and now all it is is one hundred and fifty percent invasive. Now there is nothing left there except bittersweet, swallowwort, and porcelainberry. So I'll have to go back and look at that. Yeah, more. there's nothing there. I think there actually might have been some um, goldenrod, nat native goldenrod. Um, but other than that, why aren't we doing any invasive control? Oh, that was under permit 254148. Yeah, I got it. Yeah. And they said it was a cobble. What do you guys want to do? I'm all set with everything except the fiber roll. And that is a rocky intertidal. Mm -hmm. There's not one ounce of beach there. No. Where, uh, yeah, on this, on the um, east. east side. Mm -hmm. So are we creating beach? Mm -hmm. I don't know. Mm. No, it's, oh. it's east. East, right here. Yeah, that's west. Um, but nobody else has put, weighed in, so. Usually we do fiber roll arrays to protect a road, to protect a house, to protect some sort of structure. That's why I'm having trouble while right. we're doing it. And I don't right. Know. Um, and this isn't doing any of that? No. Well, I'm protected for the future. The, uh, the closest structure is 75 feet. Yeah. Future house. Um, it is clearly an eroding bank. <coughs> it is clearly an eroding bank without any documentation of how much, how fast it's eroding. You know. No, the, the, the proposed sand nourishment that's going to have to be. Ongoing for the future. I mean, it's up to the board. Can they, can they do the nourishment without the rolls? Yeah, absolutely. Right. So um, I'll move to that effect. Nourishment, no rolls. Ten seconds and left. Yeah. Do we have you, a you amount of sand? Yeah. That they're going to per year or what they proposed. Yeah, there's plenty of slope there. Yeah. Yeah, usually though we say, you know, I know they can nourish, it's just they don't have, you know, 300 cubic yards or 100 cubic yards. I, maybe it's in the notice. I don't know if I read it. Just a minute. Jen, if they have a. Uh, put a limit on it and put yeah. the order. It says annually in late March through May, re nourished the fiber rolls with compatible sediment as needed. That's kind of a carte blanche to bring whatever you want in. So. Right, but. Well, they're if they're not going to have the fiber rolls. If they don't have the fiber rolls, they can bring in as much as they want and it should provide a lot of nourishment. Yeah. Right. Yep. <laughs> in short order. Just a couple of grinds down the road. That's not going to get that far. Uh, the volume of beach nourishment is estimated as 50 to 100 cubic yards. Okay, that's reasonable. 
So you want to allow the beach nourishment, but not allow the fiber roll array? That way, I think so. Yes. Can okay. You know, um, not to be a pain, but on page three of the notice, with the picture of all the the rocky intertidal, there. See, I guess that's where I'm concerned. There, there is no dune there. There is no sand there. It's just, right. and that's mm -hmm. where pike and plovers and you know other species live in that habitat. So. But I guess if, if natural heritage didn't have any problem, that's perfect plover habitat. They didn't have any problem okay. with the project. All right. So what would you like to do? Am I hearing beach, no roll, yeah, no fiber right? No Is that roll. what you guys are saying? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I don't know if it's a motion. No. Do we have the motion? Yeah. The yeah. motion is yeah. yeah. second. I'm sorry. Okay. All right, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, unanimous, so moved. And finally, the 300 committee land trust here, get it straight. Quorum, is everyone here? Staff doesn't have any concerns with the 300 committee's project. No, it's a nice project, nice place. And no, I just wish there was more access to it because I never even knew it was there. Well, now you'll be able to walk I know, it. now I know. Yeah. I'm not sure that their solution is going to help us see where it is. I don't either. Um, Signs on the road. Well, we did discuss some signage. Yeah, yeah but that's more looked it up on the CPC and, you know, but, yeah. The signage on the road is more like at the cemetery than... Yeah. 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 Would Atria let you put up a sign? Kind of as like well, a like town. Well, they just bought the piece of property from Lawrence Lynch. Oh. There's a little piece. Yeah. Atria or 300? I mean, uh, 300. 300. So that in theory the is going to afford them the opportunity to put signage. I, I don't think it'll be access per se, but. Well, is it under Cape and Vineyard? Power lines right there, too? Well, they have the easement, yeah. but Lawrence Lynch owned it. Yeah. And it's only right. a small piece, but it, it may allow them to do signage. It's like at the front, at the front entrance of Atria. Right on Gifford Street. Yeah. So I I Thank you. Oh. You sounded optimistic. Not how you get there, though. I know. Well, yeah. Well, right. it's almost a very, very exclusive pathway, walkway for the Atria clients. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, four, they're gone? With, with four parking spaces that say reserved for walking paths. Yeah. It doesn't say for Atria walking paths. Yeah. Three hundred. I think walk. this boardwalk they're trying to open up the property. Yeah. Yeah. I really do. Oh, I do. It's yeah. just I feel that when you have that kind of beautiful piece of property, that there needs to be better visibility so people know they have access to it. Oh. And I think what they're doing is wonderful, but <laughs> you know, now it's going to be really nice for the atrium people again. Right. And that was all a trade-off, just so you know. When they did that project, right. they yeah. had to give. They had to give. Right. Yeah. This wasn't like they were nice. It was better as three whole golf. <laughs> Well, it wasn't. Or three golf. So what's the easement they're using for the parking? Much better. Or are they just going on? You have to just drive in. You'd never know. We never knew until that we were told that you drive into the parking lot. I, didn't, I still don't know. Back left this. corner. Back left yeah. corner. Right? Yeah. yeah. Because I went, through Lawn, I went through Cape and Vineyard to get there. Yeah, you know, it's, right. it's funny. I, I used I to, it nice. was more noticeable when it was a golf. I used to occasionally notice the golf carts running around. Right, right. Yeah. exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, mm. um, can we? Well, they are going to put signage at Lawrence Lynch. Yeah, the property they purchased. I can, did I they so. ask Atria about that permission? Mm -hmm. To put signage at Atria? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, we should have one of our little green diamond signs. and It's not ours. Well, that's right. Yeah, it's not our property. It's the 300 community's property. Right. It's whose property? 300. 300. 300. I understand that, but it was conditioned as part of the construction approval, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, there's supposed to be a signage for the pack. There's supposed to be, uh, I don't know, four spaces that are yeah. allocated for it. And I think there's at least signage indicating that the, the, the spaces are for uh, the pack. 300 committee. The 300 committee, yeah. Right. We're talking about... Well, you know, could they on be the street, front? they're not easy to find. <laughs> they're not easy to get there. Um, no, it's not that easy. On the other hand, well, the project itself was 
I think, you know, because there's not much discussion, I think it was well presented and did oh, the yeah. job it was supposed right. to do. Yeah, so they do have their website and their pamphlets. It's better than nothing. You know, everybody talks about websites. A lot of people, <laughs> you know, like I don't use websites. You know, Why would I, I find a 300, 300 committee website? No, I, I understand. <laughs> I'm just saying it's, yeah, it's better I know. than nothing. It is better right. than nothing. I, I wish we had thought before we closed the hearing to ask everything. them to go back and ask I Patriot. We get to put it as a special condition, um, inquire but if whether. Oh, if Atria wire. says no, there's nothing they can do. Okay, if Atria says no, or Atria, however you say it, they say no, there's nothing we can do. You can condition it that they approach or inquire um, that okay, Atria allow them to place some signage on the property indicating the, the, the path. But let's do that. Okay. All right. It just seems like Where the if we don't have is. access to it, it's kind of a waste to put all this money and effort into this huge bridge and walkway and blah, 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 and meanwhile, nobody knows it's even there. Right. Well, yeah, I I agree this is a problem. On yeah. the other hand, it's not part of our look problem. at where it is, well, and eventually word of mouth, you know, it's not going to go completely unused. Right. Okay, I'll put this like that way. Right. Yeah, that's hard to find. <laughs> yeah. All right, I make a motion to accept, um, uh, as we discussed, the project for the 300 committee. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. So moved. Motion. One sec. Uh, Jen, have yeah. you had a chance to talk to Pat about the quorum question? Oh. Oh, I have not. Okay. I'm going to add that. I was. I uh, talked about to this? Pat. If she's evening. around, is she in town? I believe she is. I Would you like me to talk to her? <coughs> you can. All right. I'll put that on my thing. I have time now <coughs> this week. I can. I can do that. Or next week. Choir. But. All right. I, had I spoke to her briefly no. last week, and she was busy, so I told her I would send her an email, and I just got busy. I'll just drop in. Okay. Motion something. to adjourn. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? I Adjourned. made a motion. Thank you, everyone. Mary. I